Okay, so I finally watched Dope Sick, and as a physician, I feel like, you know, my reaction to this might be a little bit different than everybody else's, so I'll go ahead and just kind of walk you through some of the thoughts and reactions that I had to this uh, series. So now, this series is on Hulu. Um, I don't have any affiliation with them uh, or with any of the people that I mentioned in terms of financial whatever, so this is just my unaffiliated reaction. Um, I do think it is worth watching. I think that one of the first questions that popped up in my mind was, wow, was this Dr. Phoenix guy? Was he an actual physician? Turns out, no. Uh, he is a fictional accumulation of stories. Uh, the entire Hulu series, Dope Sick, is based on a uh, investigative journalist uh, book by uh, a woman named Beth Macy. And this is Dope Sick by the same name. And I'll include links below to the Hulu series and to the book if you want to go buy that. I do think it's an interesting story that is worth checking out. The um, piece by uh, Miss Macy is actually meant to be more facts-based journalism. And the Hulu is a um, narrative interpretation of that, the Hulu series. So let's kind of go through some of the things that I think are useful truths that come from this that aren't necessarily... Um, like a true narrative piece of thing, but just like uh, truths about the opioid concern in general that you might've heard. So first of all, uh, opioid addiction is absolutely real. Now, lots of people have varying degrees of opinions on how much of a problem it is, how prevalent it is. And I'll actually include uh, below some links to different news articles and stories that think that maybe Dope Sick was a little too heavy handed and maybe overblowing things. And then some that thought Dope Sick really did a good job of really kind of hammering home some of the truths that a lot of people are dealing with with this. But uh, I'm telling you this as a physician, someone who talks to other physicians, opioid addiction is absolutely real and it is absolutely a problem. Whether or not you want to uh, have arguments about how prevalent it is, all I know is there are a lot of people who are struggling with this. And for those who are struggling with this addiction, it is absolutely a real life threatening and life controlling problem that they have. And it is a thing that I sure hope they find some freedom from soon. Next, and I think this is a very important one because there is a stigma with substance dependence, substance abuse is I really wanna drive home a very, very true fact. So I firmly believe that the majority of people, and I have no actual statistic for this, but this is just my belief from meeting a bunch of them. I firmly believe that most people who are struggling with an addiction or a dependence to opioids did not start that out of, a, out, of a, out of a desire to have fun or recreation. I believe that most people were started by some well-intending, um, hopefully, physician or provider of other type who has the ability to prescribe these medications and they just became dependent because it is the nature of the medicine that it creates dependence over time in some people. So um, I believe that most of them started with legitimate pain needs and someone thought that this medicine would be useful for them and it turned out to uh, take over their life at some point. So I wanna be clear that I do not think that because someone is dealing with an addiction that they started with uh, some malintent. A lot of these folks are decent folks who started with someone telling them this medicine would help them with the problem they were facing and it turned out the medicine caused its own problem. Now having said that, I think it's also important to note that opioid medications um, it is not like they are useless. Um, there is some indication for use for these medicines in short-term pain, and they can be very, very useful in helping people get through immediate issues or what we call acute issues, new issues. I think what does seem to be shown in most of the data so far, particularly when you balance it against the risks, that there is a lessened utility when you start dealing with chronic pain because as the longer you take this medication, the uh, tendency for dependency and addiction increases, as well as the tolerance to the dose to where it gives you less of an effect than it used to. And that is a dangerous combination where you start needing more and more of a medication that you now require to feel the same way, and that puts you in uh, a bad place. So that is a thing to keep in mind with this, that over time, it starts to um, not do what it used to do for you. The thing that that makes me think about is there's an episode in the story, and if you are a physician, uh, you're a nurse, you're somebody who might have who works in the medical universe, you probably have seen this before. Um, but man, there was a scene where someone was describing their current status on this medication to Dr. Phoenix, and they were saying, Doc, it's like I'm sleeping all the time, I can't barely stay awake, 
And the second I manage to wake up, the only thing I want to do is get another pill. And that really kind of hit home because as I watch that scene in Hulu, and I'm sure a lot of the physicians out there are thinking the same thing, man, I pictured some patients that I have come across and I remembered patient interactions that I've had. And I remember the, the struggle that they were facing. And um, man, that, that hit real for me. And it was one of those instances where a fictional narrative story can really drive home some real, real life truths. The other real life truth is, and this is, uh, this is a hard one to deal with because um, oftentimes someone ends up with a dependence developing, they end up with an addiction. Sometimes their doses get extremely high to a place that I would probably call them inappropriate. And then they come up across someone who just says, hey, I need to reduce that. Um, another instance that this movie or this uh, series had for me that I pictured conversations I've literally had with people was when Dr. Phoenix talks about reducing somebody off a dose saying, hey, um, you know, it's been a couple weeks, it's time to come off this medicine. And that immediate look of anxiety, that immediate look of terror in a patient's face when you say, hey, I think it's time to come off this medication. Um, that is something that if you're a prescriber, you have probably seen before. Um, if you're a prescriber who hasn't seen that before, you probably should start talking to people about reducing their opioids. But man, that is, um, it's a rough thing because you're saying to someone, I think for your health, we need to take away a thing that you've started to grow independent on. We need to start backing that off. And that can be really, really difficult. So when we talk about these hard situations where whether it's a dependence or addiction, the amount of pain that's being relieved is going down and the idea of withdrawing is can be uh, terrifying and scary or physically uncomfortable, you kind of have to start asking yourself and it's not always productive, right? Um, with the exception of trying to figure out how to not do this again or how to not do this with more people, but start asking yourself like, well, where does the blame belong? And there is certainly plenty of blame to go around if you're watching the Dope Sick movie. Um, I'll include some links below, but um, quite frankly, obviously the pharma company um, bears a lot of the blame for this um, because there was some misleading um, uh, information being given out and you have uh, physicians who you want to believe the majority of them were trying to do good things and prescribing this medication in inappropriate ways to people in good faith uh, because good intentions don't mean we can't hurt somebody, right? Um, and I think that's one of the problems with this. If you don't have good information, even good intentions, you can hurt people, which is one of the reasons that lying about medication is such a big deal. So I think that's one of the things you have to look at is pharma has some issues. Um, clearly, and I think there were some examples of this in the, the show itself, Clearly, there were some folks who were writing prescriptions who bear some blame for what they were doing. Uh, I think some of the examples that they gave might have been a little bit uh, over character, character or characterizations of each other or caricatures, but um, really there are people out there who are just for bad reasons um, prescribing crazy inappropriate amounts of medication um, and luckily we seem to catch them, right? Because eventually they get, they get to, to do too much of this and they get caught, but often they have really ruined a bunch of lives in the process. And that is obviously a problem. You know, it's hard to control everybody all at once. Um, I think that the move towards monitoring these things, the move towards uh, restrictions that some of the states have done, um, have actually curbed a lot of this a little bit. I understand that there are a lot of folks who prescribe medication who don't like the notion of someone interfering with what they do. Um, I'm not a big fan of practicing medicine from um, you know a government office, but the reality is that um, there were some people doing some dangerous stuff and a number of them got reined in by some of these rules. So I think that is good. I think one of the things you have to also think about when we're trying to say, well, you know, government restrictions has done some good for some of these things is that quite frankly, the government was complicit in a lot of this problem. So when you look at um, pain as the, the fifth vital sign, which is one of the stuff that uh, they talk about in this in the show, that is a thing that literally existed. Um, obviously, it wasn't for forever. I'll include a link to uh, you know some government information below. Uh, but it was a thing where they were literally saying, you know, the government was saying, hey, you're not going to be reimbursed at full rates. You're not getting your hospital ratings. You're not doing your job as a physician if you're not adequately treating their pain. And back then, that meant giving what we now believe to likely be inappropriate doses of this medication and uh, inappro maybe inappropriate starts of this medication to everyone. And those are problematic things because sometimes good intentions, and I believe 
hopefully the government had good intentions like, hey, let's just make people not hurt. Uh, but there are unintended consequences that come with those good intentions. So there was lots of blame to go around. Pharma, uh, some of the folks who are prescribing, and as well as the government. So there were lots of problems there. And I think all of them are going to be required to somehow dig us out of this. Everybody just has to start acting better and doing better things for each other. So uh, if you've been watching this and maybe this has been a little personal for you because you or someone you love or are around, has a substance issue. Maybe it's opioids, maybe it's something else. Please understand that there is help out there. I understand that the notion of insurance coverage here in the US makes some of those things hard to access, but I'm gonna provide a link below for resources, for places where you can try and help find treatment, try and help find care and support to help you and or your family or loved ones deal with this because sometimes this isn't just the person who has the actual chemical addiction themselves. Sometimes it's the family around them. There are a lot of people who are impacted by this and it often takes a lot of people to help someone find the solution and find safety. So until then, uh, go ahead and check out these resources. Check out the show and the book if you're interested. And try and stay safe out there, y'all.